Yeah, man. So we had a good brother back in the day from over East Baltimore up the hill in the real trenches. Well-known brother. Super crap ball. He probably was like in his 40s back then, but he looked like he was in his 30s. Brother had a one-of-a-kind personality. Super funny, but super cruddy at the same time. Now, it was well-known throughout the good brothers that this good brother had a drug problem. Uptown, sleeping in bandominiums, looking dirty, drugging and thugging. Can't be trusted. You see him uptown on the street, he always like he trying to finesse his way into some money. To see niggas be different when they get locked up. In the joint, he well-loved. Make everybody laugh. And see, that was the name of his gang. He would use his sense of humor to get in a lot of closed doors. But he was a brother that would abuse his membership. And when I say that, I mean like this brother felt like because he was a good brother, he ain't had to pay no debts, no loans, no bills, nothing like that. Nothing got to do with returning or reimbursement. So he one of them old school niggas, right? This type of nigga he was. When he come on location, he looked to see who run the show, who the skipper is. And that's how I know he going, how he know how far he going to go with his bullshit on that location. And when he come in the penitentiary, right, I was the skipper down there. I was running the show. I was in the driver's seat. And by me being young and this being his first encounter with me, he think, oh, I'm about to drag. Like I say, he ain't know me. He don't know. I run a tight shift. Most of my locations, zero tolerance. That's what I was running the show at. Like I say, the brother wasn't knowing that, right? As soon as he come on location, as soon as he come on location, I know who he is. I heard of him. He that's never met, but I heard of the brother. Just like he heard of me. So as soon as he get down there, he find out who's running the show. He want to meet me. First day in the jail, he want to meet me. I, we come in the yard. He come out. Hey, bro, what's going on? I'm already knowing what he's doing. He filling me out, right? So after that first conversation with me, I told him the policy down there, how I was running the show. It wasn't no secrets. Told the brother everything. But he took that and interpreted it into what he wanted it to, right? After not being on location less than, a, I'm going to say, a week, he gets on his best bullshit. Some niggas get some smack in the jail. He running around left and right, borrowing money, getting shit on the arm. Man ain't got a money order since he been in the jail. Ain't got a green dot since he been on location. Borrowing everything so he can get that smack. Now, because he a good brother... Niggas in the jail ain't going to just turn up on them about no money. They going to come holler at the good brothers first, try to resolve things peacefully. And I'm knowing niggas, man, you feel me? So it's out of respect. But anyway, one day I'm out in the big yard in that penitentiary. Me, Big Gus, my man, a few outstanding members. We be spending the yard. And the dude from over East Baltimore that I was familiar with from up on the farm when I was up on the farm, while we was walking around the yard, he pulled me up like, Dutch, can I talk to you? So I tell the good brothers, I'm going to catch him when I spin back round. And I went on here and hollered at Shorty, right? Me and him get to walking around. Shorty was a Muslim. He was from over East Baltimore, right? He be getting to the papers. He walk around the yard. He like, that. you know I respect y'all, yo. Especially you. You always kept it real. He like, yo, but your brother, man, such and such, you got an outstanding debt, like $700, Dutch. So I'm like, what? He like, yeah, yo. I'm thinking to myself, like, why the fuck they let that man run up that bill like that? But I'm already knowing the answer to that question. He a good brother. And a lot of times, niggas will look out because they don't want to get pressed out. You see what I'm saying? But anyway, so Shorty was like, that's your out of respect for y'all, yo. He was like, yo, I'd take 350 from him, yo. The man owed me 700 He's like, I'd take 350 Yeah, but I need something back, yo. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm going to do my investigation. I'm going to talk to the brother and see if this is official. If the brother owed the money, he's going to pay you the 350 that's agreed upon? He's like, yo, that's agreed upon. Boom, we shook hands. Soon as he walked off, I'm mad as a motherfucker. Because shit like that make us look bad as a whole when this bitch running up bills. So now I'm storming around the track, walking around the yard, trying to catch up with the other brothers I was walking with originally, right? Soon as I catch up with them, good brother Lil Meat was over there. Bless his soul, Lil Meat. He was in the pen at the time. Fat Riley was in the pen hospital. Square business, this was back then. I catch up with the good brothers. I tell Lil Meat, like, Blase, Blase, what Joe just told me, right? You know what Lil one said? He like, yo, ain't lying, man. Now I know that bitch owe the money. Lil Meat say, man, we should break his arm. <laughs> Square business showed up. Jordy said, we should break his arm. So I'm laughing, like, damn, brother said, break your shit. But <laughs> well, we was in the big yard, you feel me? The brother that we was talking about, he was over in the little, small yard. So I'm like, I'm ready to go holler at Joe. So we get to marching over there. To the small yard, caught him slipping. He in there with the other brothers working out, talking and shit. Walked right up on him. 